work. The bomb's impact resulted in the destruction of the Leviathan shield, and the seed is now exposed. Fly there and destroy it. Well, I think that's all the scene setting we really needed for this episode, but either way, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. In the last episode, as you obviously saw, we used a homemade nuclear device to successfully take out the Leviathan Seed Shield. In one of the cooler scenes in this game, I'll be honest, if, yes, as many people have said, very orange. Don't worry, we'll be going to a new world soon, which is uh, just as just as orange as this one. It's slightly less orange than the last two, but it's still very much on the orange side. Someone made a very interesting point in the comments where they said part of it is because... So the phase on is like this bright blue and the game being very orange kind of really makes that blue pop. And I can see that. And also, like, it's kind of crucial for this game that hyper mode looks different. And it's like, if you've got a very, like, orangey, quite vivid world in this way, as soon as you go into hyper mode, everything suddenly looks, like, very desaturated and different. So I guess maybe that's what's going on there. Anyway... I was going to say heal, but it's like you're going into your ship, so I think I believe that heals you automatically. I think even if you don't save, your ship at least still heals you. It doesn't give you missiles back, I don't think, but it gives you... Oh, it does give missiles back, or I was just on full missiles anyway. Either way, the shield is down, which means, of course, the Leviathan Seed is exposed. So, let's fly there, and you know how this is all going to go. Well, welcome to another Leviathan Seed, which looks almost identical to the last one. We've got some stuff here we couldn't scan before, though, well, it wasn't here before. This is a Phazon Leech, a non-aggressive scavenger that feeds on wounded and dead bioforms. Can there really be that many of them to secure a good food supply inside the Leviathan Seed? I don't know, but I'm not here to talk about imaginary um, food production chains, I suppose. Um, you've got these weirdly, like... Um, oh, here we go. Uh, so this is something new. Never mind me talking about what part of the body those doors look like. Um, bony structure appears to have multiple weak points. If hit simultaneously, they could be destroyed. These ones can be a bit awkward because it's quite close quarters. And as such, hitting all of them, as I've said in the past, um, generally they can be a bit... Uh, the Seeker missile, missile can be a bit tricksy on whether it actually hits them all simultaneously or not. Certainly, the game has a pretty low tolerance of them not being simultaneous and yet provides no mechanism to ensure that they are simultaneous, which is pretty shitey. But, as ever, that gets us through the Leviathan Seed to boss. I mean, just to this empty chamber. Well, welcome to the weirdest boss in Metroid Prime 3, without a shadow of a doubt. This weird thing is Helios. Helios is using the swarm bots to form a fast-moving ball of energy. Avoid contact with the sphere. So, give me some information on Helios overall, will you? Helios' exterior is well armored, but still vulnerable to beam weaponry. Inflicting enough damage will cause it to overheat and expose the phase on enhanced core. This core can be overloaded with phase on based energy. Destruction of the core unit should prove fatal, but that is difficult to achieve. The target is a pr the prime bot of a large group of swarm bots, all of which are energized by phase on. Helios will use the swarm bots for both offensive and defensive measures. Assuming different formations will allow for various forms of attack. So, as the logbook says, your main task is basically just to wail on it. But you'll notice it's flashing yellow when it gets hit, which means it's not it takes taking like armor damage. It basically means yellow is the game's way of saying it's being hit, you are successfully hitting, but you're not actually doing damage as such. You're destroying some kind of armor or shield until you start doing red. Red is how you know when you're doing real proper damage. Don't bother wasting anything fancy on it at this point. You just literally want to hit it with the beam as much as possible. You'll know when you get through it properly. They, this is a bit more of a chance to actually really hit it. And it's really just about dodging and avoiding Helios' own attacks until you have a chance to wail on him. This is a slightly strange one. He makes like a shield out of all of them. And you just want to shoot again towards him. There we go. 
So we overheated him there and his core is exposed. So when he comes down to the ground here, hyper mode time and just blast as much as you can into his core. Oh, he overwhelmed me briefly. That was a bit shitey of him. He can do that. But if we blast a whole tank into him, there you go. We, oh, actually, we did quite a lot of damage to him there. Good. And then we just repeat the process. He basically gains more attacks. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. He does this little thing. You can destroy each of those weak points simultaneously. And then you actually stun him in the middle there. And this can be a good chance to get some hits on him, except I missed a load of them because I forgot that... Like a lot of bosses, like basically every boss in the game, um, when you're locked onto him, you still can free target, and so I just fired a load of shots into the air, which was fun. Oh, we got some good shots on him there. Oh, he's doing the ball one. The ball one's easy to dodge, it's just you can't get many hits on him while you're doing it, so a lot of this is about just knowing how to lead plasma shots as well, because as you'll notice, there is a delay. They don't instantly hit, and uh, I think the power beam was actually the same, they don't instantly hit where you were pointing. Um, there is a t time delay on them, like they, they take time to move through space, so I guess it's not really a time delay so much as a space delay. But there are those that are argue that that's the same. But either way, um, we've got some good hits on him, so soon enough, depending on what attack he does, we should get a chance to wail on his core again. Oh, he's doing his- oh no, this is him going into the core again, excellent, yep. So wait for him to hop down, and there's your chance, really. And I'm just gonna actually stay back from a little bit, um, there we go. And I'm- oh, balls, don't want another tank in. Basically, he should take three cycles, um, and we've done enough damage to him, we'll do a th get a third cycle. Um, should be enough to kill him. Is he gonna do the bloke? He's doing the bloke. So he turns into a massive man, um, which is why I call it the bloke. Um, he'll lift a limb to attack. At that point, you want to wail on the red joint where that limb, uh, connects to the main body. Uh, so there's one there, and then he'll just do each one in turn. Helios does very little damage to it, it's just basically a case of dodging his slow and predictable attacks until you get a chance to attack him bodily. And that's it, he's gonna open up again now immediately. Oh, he's not even gonna do the tornado attack. Cool, right, let's just kill him. Weird boss, weird, weird boss. Yeah, I don't mind Helios. It's not like a bad boss, it's just strange. Uh, and it's just not at all even remotely challenging. I just, uh, for to say how cool of a world Elysia is, this boss is just a bit slightly disappointing. But, as is, you'll notice now, a tradition, whenever we defeat a Phazon enhanced uh, Leviathan Guardian, we get a hyper upgrade. So, this is the Hyper Missile. You've noticed so far this game hasn't had the Super Missile, where you charge up a uh, charge shot and press A and, and then fire a missile. The game's equivalent of that is the Hyper Missile. So... Its use is in destroying these solid Phazon Crystals. You fire it with D-pad down when in Hyper Mode. Oh my- oh my voice! <coughs> Terrible. Um, yes, you fire it with D-pad down, and it fires immediately there. As you'll notice, it doesn't here, actually, strange enough, but under normal circumstances, it uses five missiles. So it is the same as a super missile from other games, nice and powerful.
Ecclesia is now free of further corruption, Samus. Both Leviathans have been removed from Federation space. You have once again performed admirably. However, the threat is not over. We received word from a reconnaissance unit that an emergency GF communication capsule has been found. Analysis has uncovered a message from Gandreda sent while she was searching for the pirate homeworld. This is her last message right before she disappeared. To our surprise, the message indicates that a Leviathan has also impacted the pirate homeworld, which suggests that pirates are now enhancing their military forces with Phazon. Worse, the corruption appears to be spreading very quickly. It's as if the planet itself is transforming into pure Phazon. Left unchecked, this corruption could spread to the entire galaxy. The time to act is now. You must destroy that Leviathan and stop the spread of further corruption. To that end, the Federation is planning a full-scale assault on the pirate homeworld. The attack will commence as soon as our preparations are complete. We have marked the location of the pirate homeworld on your map. And Samus, be on the lookout for Kandriga. So... With Alicia saved, yes, we've discovered the location of the Pirate Homeworld, which doesn't get a name, it's just called the Pirate Homeworld. But it's over here, it's got its own Leviathan that's fucking it up, but they seem to be encouraging that. Here the game gets a bit of a tone shift, because it's time to stealth our way into the Pirate Homeworld. I think the Pirate Homeworld, whilst orange, is a cool bit of design. So, welcome to the homeworld of the Space Pirates. It's very kind of diesel punky. It's very bioengineering and tubing and all that kind of stuff, which is quite cool. There's a couple of things to scan here. There's a pirate cargo, pirate cargo drone that transports various supplies around, and it's carrying a heavy Phazon canister, which are both useful scans, but not useful things, unfortunately. So, let's proceed on. There's only really one place we can go for now. And yes, this is a bit of a sneaky-do for now. Oh, balls, have they both gone hyper? That doesn't seem fair. Uh, at least they die instantly in hyper, because that's the thing, like, when you're in hyper mode, you are actually more vulnerable to hyper mode. So, oh, there's all sorts of cool shit here going on. There's cool stuff shooting at us, and there's cool stuff on the walls. This is a despair class current. Heavily armored defense system susceptible to explosive attacks. But it takes a lot of them. Uh, a couple of missiles and um, beam combo things, so freeze and then blast again, will take it down. But it's not fast. You got this thing here. <clears throat> The lift door is sealed shut, use the nearby terminal to open the door, and the nearby terminal just says terminal controls lift door, unit is currently without power, energize terminal to open the door. Not helpful, uh, we'll have to figure out a way to do that in a bit. You've also got various things here, you've got, actually, handy, a map station behind there, but we can't use it because it's behind this terminal. Terminal controls the nearby advanced energy shield, advanced visor system required to use terminal. We can use the terminal, um, you've got four symbols in there, and you can poke these things on the edge. Um, but it's not help, help, happy, it's not happy, it's not helpful, I think it is possible to get through those without the, um, without the advanced visor system, it's just bloody unlikely. Finally here we got a bit of pirate lore, our mission. Phazon was discovered two stellar years ago. It's only been two years between now and Metro Prime 1. I think it's been longer than that in real time since I last played it. Um, two stellar years ago, and since that mov moment, moment, moment. 
Command has been driven to control it all. Two operations have been established at tremendous cost. That's Metro Prime 1 and Metro Prime 2. Both have failed, thanks to the accursed sun hunter, Semis Aaron. That's me. Her Federation allies now move to secure what little phase remains on planet Aether. That cannot, this we cannot allow. We, the crew of the battleship Colossus, swear to take back that phase or die trying. Hmm, interesting. Um, but yes, we can now proceed here up to where we've got um, a lift with first floor, second floor, and third floor. You can go to the second floor, but there's no point in doing so for now. You'll understand why later on we'll... We'll see that, and it's the third floor is only the real, the floor you can really do anything useful at. There's an option to the right, and you'll have to take my word for it again. It doesn't go anywhere. Well, it goes out to nonsense. Notice that it's raining. Um, we'll see in just a second what that means. Coming along here, we have another scan because you're on a new. We've not come across these before. This is a pirate orange door. So you know, add that to the list. additional information concerning the pirate facility. We believe there is a cargo supply route that connects directly to the seed. The gate in this room appears to be its main entrance. It will be impossible to go through that area unless you can find protection from the acid rain. So yes, the whole pirate homeworld is covered in this acid rain. It looks cool, but if you step out into it, watch our health. It starts going down slowly at first, and then it fucking rinses it. So, yes, we need protection against that. But that's why this handy thing appears, which looks like... I don't know, it looks kind of like a Morbis or or Twin Mold from Majora's Mask or something like that. Well, from a number of Zelda games, actually. Um, but we can ignore that for now and hop up... What the fuck? Ignore that for now and hop up into these Morph Ball tubes. I really quite like <laughs> the beginning of this whole Pirate Homeworld mission because it is very kind of stealthy. You really feel it like you are sneaking into a heavily guarded place, which we haven't really been so far. We've kind of been all guns blazing into into everywhere we've been so far, so it's kind of cool to be like on the sneaky. And the fact that it's like dark and rainy, it's, it reminds me of the Night Shift mission from Nightfire, which I thought was particularly cool. If you don't know what that is, go back and watch my Let's Play of it. Though I would say that, because that's my thing that I say. Uh, you've noticed, of course, we got a missile there. Ooh, and a, a sneaky pirate there. Um, if we go back and now take the other option here... Ooh, there we go. Ah, I know it's acid rain, but it looks really nice and relaxing, the kind of orangey rain. I'd say the colours here, while they're still largely speaking orange, it's... It's slightly less orange than, than than so far. It's more orange and black than just orange and orange. Anyway, here we can steal an energy cell. Add it to the list. And that opens the way through the weird three-eyed door. And that's what we're going to do next episode. So this may have been a shorter one because I think I went through Helios faster than I was expecting. But thank you very much for watching. We've come here to the pirate homeworld. And next episode, we're going to be infiltrating it in search of a way to get past the acid rain. Thank you very much and good day.